introduce you to our latest and quite possibly greatest new camera, the EOS R5C. All right, before we get started, I just want to say that this camera is a great step in the right direction for Canon. They addressed a lot of the issues with the R5 and they did so at a pretty good price. 4,500 bucks is a good price for a camera that shoots 8K up to 60 frames per second in RAW. That's pretty insane. Um, all that in a compact body is awesome. So this camera is going to be the perfect camera for a lot of people. But I think that there are three huge issues that you should be aware of if you're considering buying this camera. So this is part of a Canon cinema line. So this is a video focused camera. Unlike the R5, which is a photography camera with really good video features, this is a video camera first and foremost. So why on earth does it have a micro HDMI? It doesn't have an SDI. It doesn't have a full size HDMI. It has a micro HDMI. And I know that you can de-squeeze anamorphic on the back of the LCD of the camera, which is awesome. And you can monitor LUTs but a lot of people still prefer to have an external monitor. Especially if you have a rig, you kind of need to have a monitor. So I don't understand why they decided to use the worst port for this. Not only is it easy to break, but you also have to have a separate cable now from all your other accessories. It doesn't make much sense on a camera that even has time code. The second issue is the different media slots. It's really annoying that one of them is CF Express and the other one is SD when it's a lot easier to just deal with two of the same card. Not only is CF Express a lot more expensive than SD cards, but you're gonna actually need a way bigger card than the SD card if you're shooting at the same time. The CF Express card is shooting the higher resolution while the SD card either shoots a lower resolution or a proxy. So the CF Express card is gonna be filled way faster. And that just kind of makes it really uneven. For video, it makes sense because you're not gonna be shooting 8K raw on an SD card. But for photos, it's really annoying because you need two different cards to be able to shoot redundancy. I believe that the way that Sony is doing their card slots lately is the best way to do it because you can shoot on two CF Express Type A's at the same time or two SD cards at the same time. So you kind of have redundancy no matter what. Um, and the fact that you can shoot on 90% of the video formats on this camera on SD cards is fantastic. The third issue that I have with this camera and by far the most confusing is I don't know where this camera is supposed to be positioned. I know lines between the cinema and the mirrorless cameras are getting blurred nowadays, especially with the FX3. And then you have the R5C, which is part of Canon's cinema line. So it has to be video first, photo second. And it's being positioned as kind of a hybrid, like the true hybrid camera, kind of like they're going after the A1. But it's not really a hybrid camera. It's kind of two cameras in one. Um, it's really confusing because you can't, if you're in photo mode, you can't take any video. You have to physically switch the power button from photo to video. And someone mentioned that somewhere around eight seconds for it to just completely load the new menus and system up, which is insane. If someone's doing wedding photography or videography and they have to snap something quick for photos, you're kind of stuck. You're going to lose the moment. Purchasing a cinema camera is, a, first of all, really expensive, huge investment. But the fact that you can't take any photos is kind of hard for someone who's just starting out. That's why mirrorless cameras are such a great option because they have great video features and they take great photos. The R5C is a mirrorless camera, but it's also a cinema camera, but it's not both. It's one or the other at all times. So it's really not hybrid camera it can't be a hybrid camera but for now i think the a1 is still in my opinion is still probably the best hybrid camera because it can do photo and video extremely well and at the same time and with usable media slots um and the full size hdmi is really nice so those were three things that i wanted to talk about because they might be deal breakers to a lot of people uh and for forty five hundred dollars you really don't want to make that kind of investment and then regret it I've had to think about this a lot because I really didn't want to switch from Canon to Sony because doing so is really expensive and time consuming. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. This camera is obviously not out yet and it could be a non-issue. Uh, you can just ignore everything I said. But um, I think they're going to fix a lot of these things through firmware updates like the lack of C-Log2 and um, the weird autofocus. But for now, um, this camera is going to be great for a lot of people, uh, and it's also not going to be great for a lot of people. And now we're just going to have to wait and see how Sony responds.